So I had this initial idea that if you could suspend a series of triangular objects that were weighted on one side from a wheel in such a way that they always face the same direction, that you could design a gravity wheel around it. To actually pull it off, you'd have to use gears of some sort, which would negate any possible gains you could get from using leverage and gravity. So I thought of a way to do something similar using liquid flowing through an L-shaped tube. When the design occurred to me, I thought I might need to add an extra nozzle for the air to redistribute more easily back and forth. I tried it out without one first though, just to have a comparison. As you can see, the water flows more freely with the added air nozzle, so I added it to the design. Most of the devices I've designed for my channel have been tricky to build, simply because what you have in your head may not be something readily available on the shelves of most supply stores. So I usually end up purchasing several unrelated items, piecemealing them together, and redesigning the initial concept. For something as subtle as a gravity wheel, where most of the parts need to be specifically designed, exact in weight and size, and precision balanced, I decided to go in a different route and purchase something I've been wanting to purchase for some time, which will not only make the job of bringing my concept for a liquid gravity wheel together much more easily, but will also greatly aid in developing all the designs I come up with for my channel in the future. So I decided to pick up a 3D printer. I spent several days researching different brands and balancing out what would be the best model for me and produce the quality I need in the correct size and at the right price. I ended up choosing the Creality 10S. Now with a 3D printer you also need a good app to design your concepts in. For what I'm doing, I was able to take advantage of a really good free app called Tinkercad. It was pretty much everything I need to put together the type of designs I do. I also discovered I needed a good slicer app to convert the 3D designs into files my printer can read. I tried out a couple of apps that were also free and settled on Cura. So before I could build and test my design, I had to teach myself both apps and learn the basics of 3D printing, which trust me is more of an art. Most 3D printers can't be switched on and immediately produce a print of something. It requires some time and research into the proper print bed temperature, nozzle temp, amount of material to tell your printer to use, and fill density of your model, and many other variables. It takes a little research, but the process is fun and rewarding. That being said, I went to work on designing models of all the parts I would need for the liquid gravity wheel. I designed several rotors until I settled on two I actually ended up using. One had an odd number of arms to house the water carts, and the other had an even number. One of the suggestions I had in the last gravity wheel video was that I needed to use uneven numbers of units attached to the wheel to create an imbalance. So I decided I would test this one with even and odd numbers of water carts. I basically took the design of the water cart directly out of my head. It's very similar to the test pieces I used before I built the 3D printed model. Except there's a housing to connect it to the rods that will be inserted into the rotor, and there's a hole in one end of it where the liquid can be added and plugged with a cork later. I made these two pieces to house the actual rotor, and a stand to place square aluminum pieces in to connect them all together. I also added some simple things like these plastic washers, and even this additional piece that I put on a table saw that I could cut aluminum pieces more accurately on. These types of saws are generally not that accurate for cutting multiple parts in exactly the same size, but it only took me a few minutes to design this part to rectify that. That's the wonder of a 3D printer, once you figure out how to use it properly, anything you can imagine you can make instantly. I should have picked one up a long time ago. Nearly everything was made with a 3D printer except the aluminum piping that I used the saw to cut in size. A 
piece of wood that the gravity wheel will be attached to, some nuts and bolts, a few corks, and the steel rod I used to insert the rotor to the upper housings. I believe that the initial concept behind the liquid gravity wheel is sound, but that doesn't necessarily mean the device will work the way I currently have it designed and configured. However, part of what my channel is about is sharing what I've learned so other people can build on what I present in the form of my findings and expand upon it. Ironically, as I was putting all of this together, I already was designing a better system in my head. But I like to finish what I start, so I'm presenting the design in its original form to share the information and hopefully spark some ideas in people as well. I looked at different liquids that could be used for the system. Mercury is one of the heaviest liquids you could use. It's more than 13 times as heavy as water, but it's also toxic. Because of that, I disqualified it from consideration. I'd much rather work with things that are non-toxic. In the long run, I ended up using water. I tried adding salt to increase the weight, but anyone that's ever attempted that realizes the salt settles at the bottom of the water. It simply doesn't mix well. So I tried adding sugar, which gave me an extra gram of weight per volume. But considering the stickiness of the sugar water, the gain is negated by the mess. So for the second iteration of the model, I simply used plain water. Before assembling the apparatus, I weighed out all of the aluminum bars and the water carts to determine that they were within a gram of each other weight-wise. I also added a little clay to a couple of the arms to balance the system. So by weighing out the liquid before inserting it in each of the water carts, I was able to keep the system pretty much uniform as far as weight and balance in order to achieve more accurate results. I've tested a couple of configurations of this system. The ones I've tested do not thus far self-rotate, so I'm moving on to a different design model, and we'll post my results in another video.